Good morning, everybody. The reading this morning is from Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She'd suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding around you, the disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they had said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the father's child and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, cum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told her, told them to give, him, to give her something to eat. Good morning. Let's uh, take time to pray together as we consider this wonderful passage that Esther has read to us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, give us faith now to receive your word. Give us understanding to know what it means. And Lord, in your grace, give us the will to put it into practice. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Powerlessness. Many of us from time to time, maybe even here now in this service, feel powerless when we've got no control over the events of our life. News agencies are reporting more frequently now that people like you and I are turning off our news feed. We're, we're closing our newspapers because we feel powerless to actually do something about the events of the world around us. The war in Gaza, the war in Ukraine, climate change, the cost of living crisis, 
people dying in the English Channel trying to cross. All these things that are happening, not to speak of the the espionage and the, the undercurrent of evil that's happening in the hidden areas of the internet and in the spy world that's going on. But what if we can't switch off? What if we can't just turn off our news channels? What if we feel powerless when it comes to the personal things in our life? What if we feel powerless because of the events in our family? When we wake up in the night or when we get up in the morning and think, how on earth am I going to cope with today? I'm talking about those times when our health fails or a loved one is sick or perhaps a loved one passes away. Well, in our Bible passage today, we meet two people who were powerless, utterly helpless to change their circumstances. One is a desperately sick woman who had been bleeding continuously for 12 years. The other, a little girl of 12 who was terminally ill. And in both cases, the transformative power and peace of Jesus met them right where they were in their need, in death and despair. This morning, we're going to discover how each one of us can experience Jesus' power and peace in our own life. Firstly, we see that Jesus has the power over despair. Last week we heard how Jesus powerfully cast out the evil spirits from the Gadarene man who was, who was bound, who was chained because of his actions and because of his condition. But Jesus set him free. And after this, Jesus jumps into a boat and sails across Galilee to the other side with his disciples. And as soon as they get out of the boat, people started to swamp Jesus eager to see his power at work. Jesus is a hotter ticket than an Oasis reunion concert. He is so popular. People want to plug in to that life-changing power. And when we do a quick scan of the first five chapters of Mark, we can see exactly why people were flocking to him. Power to cast out demons, power to heal diseases, power to forgive sins, power still and a storm is calmed on Galilee. Crowds from an 80 mile radius around flocked to get plugged in to the powerful life-changing message of Jesus. People were asking this question, who is this teacher? He speaks with authority. Who is this who forgives sins? Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? But you know, Mike was reminding us last week, the demons knew who Jesus was, when they said, what do you want us to do with you, the son of the most high God? Mark's message is completely clear. He's wanting to get over to you and I, as well as his original readers, that Jesus is God, the son, come with power, God's power. Friends, there is no power in the whole of the universe like the power of Jesus. And he uses this power for good. And it's why Jairus, a respected synagogue leader, threw his reputation aside and fell on his face at the feet of Jesus, crying out in despair, Jesus, you've got to help me, Jesus. You see, Jesus was a father and the most precious gift God had given him and his wife was their little girl. And he loved her with all his heart but she had got seriously ill, terminally ill. Night after night, Jairus prayed for healing. Day after day, he sought help from the doctors. Now she had only hours, perhaps minutes to live. Jesus, Jesus was Jairus's only hope on earth. Do you know, families will try anything to help their sick kids, won't they? Our son was diagnosed with asthma as a child. He went to the doctors, he 
got a diagnosis and he got preventative medication. But I remember that one time when we were over in Belfast seeing Liz's parents and he took a severe asthma attack and we prayed, Lord, help us. And we had to rush him to get help, to be nebulized, to clear his airways so that he could actually breathe properly. He recovered. Praise God. God was good. And Jesus as a father, Jairus as a father, believed in Jesus' power to heal his daughter. And seeing his faith, the Lord went with him. But as they walked along, as the crowd pressed on them, Jesus had an encounter with another person. In that day, there was a woman desperate for help. Twelve years she'd suffered terribly with an incurable bleeding disorder. All her money had gone in doctor's treatments. There was nobody left to help her. And she'd been completely wiped out of money. She was broke. Nothing left. And to make matters worse, under the religious laws of the day, because she bled continuously, she was ceremonially unclean. Anyone who touched her would also be unclean. And anybody who sat on the same chair as her after her would also be unclean. And so you can imagine in this society that, that she was kept at a distance. She was shunned. She was there, an outsider. And she was separate from her community. What a desperate situation. Perversely, she couldn't even go into the synagogue to hear about God's love, to hear about God's mercy, to hear about the God who could heal her and save her. It's a shocking thing, isn't it, when religious rules and protocol bar us from the healing hope of Jesus Christ. So here was this woman, weak after bleeding, ashamed and desperate. <coughs> Jesus was her last hope on earth. And so she says, if I just reach out and touch his cloak, she didn't want to touch Jesus to make him unclean. That's how separate she was. If, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. What faith, what faith in this woman. And here's the wonderful news. Jesus never turns away anyone who comes to him in faith. Can, can, I, can I say that again to each one of us? Jesus never turns you away if you come to him in faith this morning, today. So wriggling through the crowd, she reaches out and touches the edge of Jesus' cloak. And, and two powerful things happen in that moment. Verse 29 if you've got your Bible and you want to read it again or your phone, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Immediately she touched Jesus, she was healed. And, and then notice what else happened in the following verse. Verse 30, at once, immediately, at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. Astonishing, isn't it? Astonishing that the, 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 the God, Jesus, who created the universe, that there was actually power going out of him, power to heal, power to change, power to give life. Jesus, the Lord, the creator, knew that out of his body had come power for healing. Anyone touching the woman became unclean. But what did Jesus do? The power had been reversed. The power of evil, the power of separation. And Jesus, that touch of Jesus, had completely cleansed her, completely healed her. Praise God. So Jesus asks in this massive crowd, who touched me? The woman came forward and she fell, like Jairus, she fell down at the feet of Jesus. All the pain and separation were gone. You know, Jesus wants us to be open about what he's done for us. I wonder if you have experienced the life-changing power of Jesus in your life. And like this woman, maybe with a little bit trepidation to begin with, but she came forward and she fell and gave her life to Christ. What do you want me to do, Jesus? I'm going to follow you from now on. You've changed me. And so she became public about it. Are we public about our faith? Are we so 
appreciative of what Jesus has done for us that we, that we want to tell others, that we want to say, no, I'm, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I follow Jesus. I, I find his, his life-changing power and words in the Bible and I read it. Let's be open about our faith like this woman. So Jesus appreciates her faith and he says these wonderful words, daughter, daughter, you're part of God's family now. You're, you're the daughter of God. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. You have been freed from your suffering. There was physical healing here, absolutely. But there was also spiritual healing and wholeness. She was now accepted by others. She could be part of the community again. She could go into the synagogue again. She could have contact with others in her family again. And more than that, she knew now the love of Jesus for her, that she'd been welcomed by God, the Father, through his power and love. This is a remarkable picture for all of us this morning of Jesus' power to heal us from our sin and to give us peace within. This summer, Liz and I were at the Keswick Christian Convention. And one of the co-presenters you can see on the picture on the right here with her Keswick Convention sweatshirt on, one of the presenters, co-presenters is Jodie Whitehouse from Liverpool. You can tell she's a Scouser by her accent. Jodie is a truly inspirational woman. She was born with congenital melanocytic navus, CMN for short. CMN is a rare skin condition that covers most of the body with large dark moles or birthmarks. And sometimes it can be cancerous. Growing up, Jodie faced physical challenge and rejection by her peers. She had multiple operations to treat her condition. And like the woman in Mark 5, Jodie also reached a point where she knew that Jesus, only Jesus, could heal the deeper wounds of her heart. She reached out to God for his forgiveness and asked him to come into her life. And from then on, from that point in her childhood, she has followed Jesus, trusting him each day. In 1997, age 17, age 17, Jody founded the charity CMN, Caring Matters Now, which supports those with this condition and funds research into medical treatments. And in June this year, Jody appeared on breakfast television to announce that the moles, the research had developed so much so that the moles can now be treated by gene therapy. And just as Jesus told the woman, your faith has healed you, Jody found that her faith in Jesus Christ brought a profound sense of peace and fulfillment for her. Her story reminds us that while our physical challenges might be overwhelming, reaching out and touching Jesus in faith transforms our life and the countless others that we then touch and bless that we come into contact with. I wonder if this morning we can identify with this bleeding woman and with Jody Whitehouse. Maybe you feel alone and rejected this morning. Maybe you're searching for peace of heart and peace of mind. No one has been able to heal you. It might be perhaps bitterness about something that's happened to you and you can't let it go or a burden of guilt and shame about sin in the past and you can't break it. Maybe you've been shunned by your family or your community and you feel isolated and alone that maybe nobody appreciates you or loves you. Reach out to Jesus today. Jesus has the power and love to touch your life and to make you whole. Come with your despair. Come with your burdens. Come with your sin. Jesus wants to heal and forgive. There's a lovely chorus and we'll sing it at the end of our service. It says, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. 
Then we see in this passage, Jesus' power, not over despair, but over death. As Jesus was helping this needy woman, devastating news arrived from Jairus' home. Your daughter is dead, Jairus. There's no need to bother the teacher anymore. Bother Jesus? Is Jesus bothered? Yes, he cares. You know, we must never think that we're annoying Jesus with our prayers or requests. The Lord says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call to me and I will answer. But perhaps you're thinking, David, if Jesus hadn't taken so much time over the woman with the bleeding problem, he would have reached the girl in time at home and healed her. And this raises the question, is God ever late? Why doesn't God answer my prayer? Well, there are such things as divine delays. When God, in his sovereign will, will sometimes wait in response to our requests. But God is never late. The Bible says there is nothing too difficult for the Lord. And if it's the Lord's will, he will answer. God is so great that if everyone in the world, everyone here and everyone across the world prayed at exactly the same time, God would hear us all and would answer all in his way. You know, Jesus, he was in complete control. Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. God is so great that he, he can come into these circumstances where we're afraid, we feel helpless, we feel that the end has come. Jesus comes in those circumstances to touch our life. And, and God might be really testing our faith too, like Jesus was testing Jairus' faith. He made a way. Sometimes he may take us out of our comfort zone and test our faith, test our trust in Jesus to help us, to, to make us more dependent upon him. And as they approached this home, Jairus' home, they could hear loud wailing in the distance. And after the death uh, in a Middle Eastern uh, country, loved ones often tore their clothes and played dirges and flutes. In addition, there was frantic uh, wailing and loud clapping led by professional mourners. Jesus went straight into the home and he says, this child is not dead, but asleep. What did they do? What was their reaction? They laughed at him. They laughed at Jesus. It was a, a mocking superiority laugh. Are you stupid, Jesus? We've seen this girl. She died. She stopped breathing. I was chatting to a friend about my faith in Christ. And he said, David, how do you know there is life beyond death? No one has ever come back to tell us. And I said, except Jesus. My friend just laughed. And it's a very natural reaction, isn't it, for our limited human minds and capacity. But God, we are not God. And Jesus can do all things. Jesus says we are just sleeping when we die, waiting to be raised to life. It's not only those who follow Jesus who experience the resurrection of their bodies. All people will be physically raised from the dead on the last day. And the difference is that Christians will be raised to glory, everlasting glory. But those who reject him will be raised to judgment. Jesus wants to encourage Jairus' faith. And so he puts these mourners and wailers out. They didn't believe in Jesus' power. Can I say, don't let anyone undermine your faith in Jesus Christ what Jesus can do through you. So Jesus takes Jairus, his wife, and the three disciples into the room where the girl is. Jairus's precious little daughter lay on the bed. Stepping forward, Jesus just takes her hand and says, arise, little girl, arise. What tender, gentle, loving words, just like a, a mum or a dad would do. Get up. It's the morning, a week. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. And everyone was completely astonished. Jesus, friends, wakes the dead, just as we would wake 
someone from sleep. And three times in the Gospels, Jesus is said to raise the dead. And I'm sure he surely raised more, but at least three are recorded for us. He raised the, the widow's son at Nain, Jairus' daughter here, and he raised Lazarus in Bethany. And in each case, he calls the dead to life. Young man arise, little girl get up, Lazarus come out of the tomb. Jesus speaks and death is reversed. Not the aging process, death is reversed. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? In the face of Jesus, in the power of our Saviour, Jesus reverses death because he is alive. Jesus had compassion on the parents and brought the little girl back from heaven. And maybe there's some in the church this morning and Jesus has compassion on your child, but maybe he didn't bring them back. Maybe he didn't bring her back, but he took them home to be with himself. The preacher Campbell Morgan from the last century had a daughter who was sick and Morgan prayed for her to live, but the Lord took her home to heaven. And here's what Morgan said. Jesus did say to her, little lamb, little girl, arise. But he did not mean arise and stay on earth. Jesus needed her. He took her to himself and she has been there all these years. And I have missed her every single day, he said. His word, just believe, has been our strength all these passing years. The first face the little girl saw was Jesus, then her loved ones. And it will be the same for us who love the Lord and look forward to his coming again. The dead will rise in Christ. Heaven is a reality because Jesus has faced down death on the cross and defeated sin and power, the power of death forever. We needn't fear death. Jesus has been raised to new life with a new resurrection body. And so will ours at his return. Our souls will be clothed with immortality, never dying resurrection bodies. And so we will be with Christ forever. My friends, Jesus has the power over death and despair. So when sickness comes, believe in Jesus' power. When the bottom falls out of our life, believe in Jesus. When the answer to prayer are delayed, believe Jesus. When you're ridiculed for your faith and Jesus' power, believe Jesus. When you're looking at a hopeless situation, believe Jesus. When death comes, believe in Jesus' power. Let's sing that song just now. And uh, maybe you've felt the Lord speaking to you and you realize that you need to reach out and touch Jesus in faith. That you need to come and with simple trust for something that's going on in your life a difficulty that you haven't been over to, over, able to overcome, a health problem that uh, you want him to heal you from. Maybe you've never come to him in faith and asked him to come into your life to save you, to forgive you, to be your peace and to be your hope. Will you come now and reach out in faith as I pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of worship and your word spoken today. We trust in your power over every fear, despair, and even death itself. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the source of life and hope. We reach out to you now, Lord, knowing that you hear us. And just as the woman touched the, the hem of your garment, Lord, we reach out in faith too. Help us to trust in your healing power, your peace and your love for us. And as we go from this place, Lord, remind us that you are always near. 
May we feel your presence in every moment, knowing that you go before us. We trust in you, Lord, in every trial, every valley, every storm. Thank you for the victory that you've already won through your cross and resurrection. May your peace guard our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.